long overdue for a Warframe video. And I think it's time I talk about Hydroid Revisited. But before we can talk about Hydroid, we need to start off with Nidus. Nidus is a extremely well-designed and extremely capable Warframe. One of the newer lines of frames that have come out in recent months. And giving him good AoE weapons, damage-capable weapons, you can do a lot with him. And he can become a master of the battlefield. I'm going to toss out 20 level 120. That is 20 level 120 corrupted heavy gunner Eximus. Just to really throw some extra difficulty into things. Start stomping with his number one. Start tossing out that uh, umbilical link to tie yourself into another target and get extra stacks and extra stomps. Keep throwing out larva to keep bad guys in a group and keep tossing out those ogress rockets for fire damage, blast damage, and even a little bit of cor uh, corrosive. It's a situation where, yes, I can master the battlefield through use of these powers, but I have to keep on top of that larva to make sure I keep all of the targets around me tied up. If these guys were not paused, I would be getting my face riddled full of bullets and I would probably get Swiss cheese very, very quickly. But as you can see, even stacking up 40, 50 stacks of his capabilities, tossing more and more rockets at the problem, I still have only barely dented this small group of bad guys. I have that group over there I still need to contend with. Which means using a clever use of larva and moving your targets around the battlefield, even if they don't want you to. Let's toss another one here. Start grouping some guys up. Drop some more rockets on the problem just to make sure and stay on top of things. And one last larva to get these two clusters together finally. Switch over to the Zakti, which has been set up to do not only impact but corrosive damage, we can start peeling off this armor layer on all of these Eximus a lot, lot faster. But it's still going to take time. Even with something that shoots exploding darts of corrosive clouds, I'm going to have to go through an inordinate amount of Zakti rounds before I really can start killing these things. Now I am making a quicker dent now than I was before, but as you can see, it is still an effort and I am having to do this while not focusing on anything else. This is me having to handle these problems and hope that there's nothing else behind me. So, if we take care of these targets, you'll notice, go over to the other side of the battlefield, we're still going to have one group of six Eximus, totally untouched over here, that we haven't done anything with. So let's bring in another person. Let's bring in Harrow to see how he handles the problem. Harrow with his capabilities of locking down the battlefield. Let's throw a scourge at the problem with radiation, viral, and corrosive to really peel off that armor. Let's also switch out the Zakti for something like, let's say, let's be different. Let's bring the static core into the problem and start tossing radiation and gas explosions at the situation. Let's see if we can actually solve it that way. Round it out with the Guandao, which is excellent whole arm for melee range, high crit capabilities, and you can really cause some mayhem on the field. We charge in, immediately noticing, not noticing, I should have popped up my energy. And let's start buffing. There we go. And rapid fire dumping rounds down range into an Eximus's head. Now, the Scourge does fire AOE blasts, but they're not big blasts, which basically means that I'm only going to be trimming down one or two targets at a time. Things die much faster this way, if you'll notice, by that. But that's one target. If we then swap out to something like, say, the Static Orb and start throwing explosions, let's do a charge up. Maybe a Kamehameha will do something. A little bit of radiation thrown at the problem. We can start turning off all of these overlapping Eximosauras. They stop buffing each other and maybe we can start helping trim them down quicker. Slide in with the Guandao and start getting lots of yellow and orange crit numbers popping off of these guys. Get some slash procs going for a little bit of dot damage that bypasses armor. But we're still going to be playing Blade Cuisinart here for an inordinate amount of time 
just to trim down this group, and I haven't even killed one target yet. This is where we need to start thinking about Hydroid. Hydroid brings into the situation a fresh batch of 20 corrupted heavy gunner eximus with the AI turned on. This time they shoot back, dive into puddle mode, immediately step into undertow and sink an entire group. While the rest of them start converging on my situation, I have plenty of time to start worrying about what I'm going to do. When in undertow, I'm invulnerable. Until I step up out of the puddle, nothing can harm me. The only thing that will become my downfall is the high usage of energy that the new Hydroid now has. I can cast within this puddle, which means I can step in and out of it very, very easily. I can drop some AOE weapons, go back into submerge, and those AOE clouds from the pox still do damage to anything submerged. If I summon tentacles while in puddle mode, they stay focused around the puddle area. I can drop Tempest Barrages on the battlefield to pop bubbles and generally knock down bad guys. If you start bringing in the augments like Corrosive Barrage, you become an armor-stripping monster. And this whole time, if I stay in Undertow, if I want to, I have plenty of time to sit and consider and try and latch onto this one stupid Eximus that I just can't grab. Step out, some quick slashes with the Dex Dakra to get some slash procs in. Do some more slide attacks on this one. Some pox tossed around for good measure. Grab them into the puddle and we wait for some more targets to die. Let's drop a Tempest Barrage to keep that target locked down until the two I'm working on die. Slide over with a cast of Tidal Surge while in undertow. And we now have one last target on the battlefield that we're sitting on right there. Toss a few pox. Slide in with the Dex Dakra, hit Undertow again, and you can see the actual procs from all of those effects on that target popping off. The more bad guys in the puddle, the more damage all things in the puddle take based upon percent damage. And suddenly, we can now check the battlefield. This side's empty. The left is empty, and the right is empty. We have cleared the field, and for once in his existence, in a long, long time, Hydroid's the right tool for the right situation. And he's the right tool for several situations now. They have done wonderful things with improving Hydroid, and I'm very, very happy. He still has a little ways to go. His passive sucks. But hopefully they'll actually see something to that. This is my build. It's not crazy. It is not extreme by any stretch. It doesn't need to be anymore. You do need Streamline now with him because he does use tons of energy. But I bring Corrosive Barrage and Curative Undertow for utility and capabilities to the battlefield. I didn't even use my Mutalist Cernos. There's my Pox set up for Blast and Corrosive Extra Armor stripping. stripping. If you wanted to, you could swap out that Corrosive for something else like Gas Damage, and it would work very, very well. If you go to the Dex Dakra, amazing weapons that do great spin slide attack damage, I have these set up for some Extra Slash and a lot of Corrosive. That Corrosive could, again, be swapped out for magnetic or whatever you may need for the given situation. But the thing is, even without the weapons, just Hydroid by himself is finally the right tool in the toolkit for some situation. And this makes me very, very happy. I can't wait to see what future things DE brings to the table, but until then, myself and Hydroid will be here waiting for you. Bye-bye. <laughs>